when you get involved in hair a lot, you start to get your fingers in the little research that's going on to advance the field. And this isn't necessarily something that has immediate benefit, but boy, it really can turn the tide for future patients, and that's what Hair Clone really is. So Hair Clone is a single company, but there's been about three companies that have really been working on this, and several uh, people in uh, PhDs in um, different academic institutions that have been working on trying to clone a hair. And the difficulty is that, well, a hair is its own little organ unit. So it's kind of tricky to get it to clone the right way or to grow, and it's constantly cycling. So in the case of hair clone, what they decided to do was to figure out how these cells back here, which are the regenerative cells for your hair, the dermal papilla cells, can be cryopreserved for future use. And by future use, I mean, everyone knows that the top of your head has hair cells that are not as robust as the back of your head. And so, because these are temporary, could we ever figure out a way to turn these into these? And it turns out you can. So what you end up doing is you end up taking some of these dermal papilla cells and you cryopreserve them. Dermal papilla cells are kind of like the stem cells for hair. And so, if you are able to multiply these dermal papilla cells, they will rejuvenate the follicles on the top of your head. I like to say it's kind of like having a vase and the hairs are kind of like the long stemmed rose. If the vase is full of dermal papilla cells, every time that long stem rose gets shed and regrows, you have 100% of that water in that vase. That happens back here. But up here, every time that rose gets out, a little bit of the water goes down, a little bit of the water goes down, a little bit of the water goes down. So if you could get some of this water and use it to tank up these vases up here, you're going to be living in some roses.